unfortunately, since I moved so much stuff out of here for that New York show, I can't find anything now. <laughs> There was, a, that, there was a big triangle piece that was here on the floor. So everything had to be moved out to get that piece out, which barely fit through the door. And big steel pieces are not here now. Well, they're covered like this piece here, which is a, I mean, this thing with all this crap on it. Again, another complicated story. That's a form, that forked stick, that exists prehistorically all over the world, in Africa, Asia, Europe, South America, North America, everywhere. And there's a kind of mystery to it. I mean, people have tempted to talk about it. Is it the human form? Uh, how sexual is it? it you know. But it's a, it's a strong form. And a couple of years ago, uh, I was, I don't know, I was just feeling here in the studio pretty restless and, and uh, thinking about what you said about the tools and realizing, yeah, but those, the Indians that I lived with, they, had, they basically used one tool and they used it for everything. They, 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 they always carried a hatchet, an axe, and they used it for everything from building a house to, to carving a small thing. And, and I remember, okay, and I had a, an axe that I had gotten there, and so I, I picked it up and I looked at it, and I said, I, "There's a lot of wood around." And I started chopping, and it felt good. It very, uh, almost like a, a, a kind of uh, of uh, meditation, just chop the wood. But the problem was, I always liked the piece of wood before I cut it better than after I cut it. <laughs> but it was fun too, and and then I, I remembered this form, and I thought, "Okay, that's a good excuse." This form is interesting. Let's see what I can do with that. So any, any time I had a piece of scrap wood, I would chop, 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 chop. And it felt good. And then I would just lean it against the bench there. And, and one day I looked at it, and the, all of them leaning against the bench. And I thought, yeah, that, these are interesting. I can do something with these. These are, are all replicas of particular uh, Inuit kayaks. That you made? That I made, most of them I made, not all, not all. And, the, yeah. and yeah, and I use them all, yeah. And I have a, 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 a close friend who is, knows more about uh, Inuit culture and, and, and most especially the boats and has traveled all over the world to measure the ones, the old ones that still exist. And the second one is a boat that's in a Dutch museum collected brought to Holland in, in the early 18th century. They're all hunting boats. They're made for particular, very specific conditions. Again, you know, local place in that particular part of the coast. And these are, are, are completely uh, accurate uh, uh, reproductions, except that I, I can't use sealskin. <laughs> so it's not, but otherwise they're the same. I use nylon with polyurethane, the stuff you put on the floor. And everything is just lashed together. No, no screws, no glue, no nothing. Just tied together. So they, and they're wonderful to paddle. They're very, very... Uh, they must be very smooth on the water. No? Well, but they're also very tippy, and they're, and they're meant to be. Because if you, know, if you have a boat that's stable, it wants to stay parallel to the water. But if the water's going like that, you don't want it to... You want, it, you want to keep the boat upright. So you want to control whether it's moving or not. So you're, you're, they're very narrow, they're difficult to get into. You, you, you wear them like a pair of jeans, like a, a pair of tight jeans. So if you move any part of your body, the boat moves. So you're in complete, it's like an extension of your body. And they're great. I mean, they're really, they're really fun. They're very easy to roll, so you can go, you, you can go over and come back up. Yeah.